Welcome back to the DC Show. This is T. McNeil. Today is Wednesday. Let's talk some tech gaming news. So guys, um, what do you feel about the PlayStation 5? Now we all know that Sony is diligently working on the next generation console or we presume that it will be called a PlayStation 5. It should be. Um, we all know that Microsoft is also working on their next gen console. Okay, so this is a time in gaming history where it's not only a good time to be a gamer, but uh, this is the end of a console generation and we're moving on to the next generation. So obviously when that time period comes every so often, you know, people get excited, people get very, you know, uh, emotional about this thing, you know, and um, as a fellow gamer, you know, I do understand, okay? Uh, but right now guys, there's some actual uh, information that was leaked about the PlayStation 5 and, um, you know, I want to make a point on those leaks. You know, it used to be a time where surprises actually were surprises, you know, and what I mean by that is, you know, with, especially with events like E3, you know, it was a time where you look forward to E3 every June because you had no idea what was going to be announced, you had no idea what was supposed to be said during that event, okay? But now, you know, there's a lot of websites out there, there's a lot of people that leak this information beforehand. And um, it's an unfortunate thing because it just takes the element of surprise away, okay? So, it is what it is, but again, this is an exciting time just to be a gamer because, like I said, we're moving on to the next generation. Uh, we have no idea what the hardware will look like. We have no idea how it's going to perform. But again, with these leaks that's coming out, uh, some of the sources are trusted and some of them are not, okay? So, you have to take a lot of this information with a grain of salt, okay? Now, um, this information, guys, is actually from um, Engadget, and that is the uh, site right there where uh, this information, now Engadget is actually a trusted source. Um, they haven't been wrong in the past, so it's one of those, you know, sites where you usually hit the nail on the head with the information. So what we'll do today, we'll go over some of the leaks and some of the next generation um, information that's supposed to be included within the PlayStation 5. Console. All right. All right. So let's actually go over some of the key uh, details that the upcoming PlayStation 5 is supposed to actually um, include. Now, it is supposed to have like a custom GPU um, built in AMD Radeon Navi family that supports ray tracing, which is something new that um, the gaming industry hasn't had before. Um, it does have advanced lighting techniques uh, that high end gaming PCs, and that's the only thing that, that that's actually reserved for. Um, immersive 3D audio and also it's supposed to support 8K graphics and it will ship with a solid state drive so those are obviously key high-end details uh, that the PlayStation 5 is supposed to actually come with now um, I've heard some rumors guys that the PlayStation 5 or presumably that's what we're going to call it is supposed to actually come with a premium price tag of $500 so you guys let me know down below in the comment section how you feel about that information um, and I'm only asking because if you guys remember back in 2006 when the um, original PlayStation 3 actually launched that bad boy was a roughly about $600 okay and I remember thinking to myself back then just how incredibly that exp you know expensive that console was at the time and then we fast forward to today's uh, custom chips and GPUs you know it pretty much crushes the PS3 hands down okay so you know a lot of people were actually complaining about that premium price back then I think a lot of the gaming companies nowadays they learn from their mistakes they're not going to price a console that high anymore uh, the Xbox One X did officially launch at $500 and then the um, original PS4 and the OG Xbox One launched at 400 okay and well one was five one was four so you know, uh, I don't think we're ever going to see that type of price tag again. But, you know, keep in mind, guys, these companies are putting in a lot of technology into these boxes. And they're trying to, you know, uh, keep it at a certain consumer-friendly price. So then that way, you know, a lot of people aren't having to really shell out too much money. Because if that was the case, you know, we'll be paying well over $1,000 for a lot of these console that's coming out especially with you know this type of technology okay but um, other than that guys let's actually get into some more information besides the uh, facts that I told you guys 
Now, um, it does say that the new system will have similar architecture to the PS4. It will therefore be backwards compatible with PS4 games and support the current PlayStation VR headset. Sony stopped short of confirming a new headset or any of the services that will be available on the console. Now, he did state that it will accept physical media just like the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, Microsoft, meanwhile, is reportedly working on a cheaper, discless version of an Xbox One S console. Furthermore, most of the details won't be a huge surprise. They're safe, logical choices for Sony, which makes sense given how successful the PS4 has been for the company. And, and that's a really good statement to make, guys. You know, the PlayStation 4 obviously has sold well over 86 million units, so it has completely crushed the PlayStation 3 sales. It has toppled the PlayStation 1 sales. And if I'm not mistaken, it actually has become really close to actually uh, outselling the PlayStation 2. Okay, so this is Sony's money maker, and the PlayStation brand is where Sony shines the most. Okay, I mean, they are a consumer giant company that do make. Uh, camcorders, they make cell phones and smartphones, they make uh, smart TVs, you know, they still have other uh, accessories, period. But, like I said, the money maker is in the gaming industry, okay, and Sony knows that, and that's the reason why uh, the PlayStation brand will continue, okay. Uh, but how do you guys feel about the whole discless Xbox One? Now, I do understand that's a side note. Um, if you guys haven't actually seen that video, make sure that you go down the timeline under Tech Gaming News and you will see that video and also did an updated video on the Xbox One discless console as well. So there's a lot of good media information on there uh, for the ones who want to know. Um, obviously the, the Xbox One was um, officially announced yesterday, I believe. So now that console will be launching, I think sometime next month. In May of 2019. So, uh, how do you guys feel about the whole discless um, console? I mean, I'm glad to see that Sony actually is continuing to support the disc function because, at the end of the day, what it's doing is it's giving the consumers um, a choice. Okay, so if you guys want to continue to use a disc, you can. If not, you know, then you know you don't have to. Okay, so. Um, Will Sony actually go the route of Microsoft one day after the PlayStation 5 or uh, during the next generation will they actually do another mid refresh and actually have another PlayStation 5 that doesn't have a disk drive? That also guys could be a possibility, okay? So I would not take that away from either Microsoft or Sony even though Microsoft is already doing that. Sony again possibly could do that but let's just, you know, Take that as with a grain of salt for right now. Um, lastly, guys, it does say that we have no idea when Sony will talk about PlayStation 5 or whatever it's eventually called. Again, last year, Kotoku reported that the new console may not arrive until 2020. Then the company announced that it won't be attending E3, the industry's largest and prestigious trade show. When the console does arrive, it'll face fierce competition from Microsoft and the growing number of streaming services including Google Stadia that promises high fidelity gaming without the expensive hardware. So how do you guys feel about um, Sony not actually attending E3 of 2019? You know I think this is the first time period that Sony's actually done this but I think strategically it's a good move and I want to say that because uh, Sony right now in my opinion I think they need to focus on getting that PlayStation 5 out the door, okay? Um, especially when we have games like um, Ghost of Shame, and once again, you know, Death Stranding, uh, Days Gone, you know, like I said, that releases on um, April the 26th this month. So these games haven't even hit the market yet. So it's gonna be one of those things where, again, they're gonna have to just focus on the next gen. And I think they're gonna take this year off to do just that, okay? Um, I know Sony's definitely going to want to get their presentation right. They're going to want to uh, put the right information out, so to speak, in the midst of all the rumors that's going around about the PlayStation 5. And I know Sony's heard all the rumors, I'm sure. Um, I do believe that some of those rumors will actually be confirmed. So definitely stay tuned because it's, like I said, it's an exciting time to be a gamer. And uh, 2020 obviously can't come fast enough. And then again, you know, Sony could possibly 
you know, do their own event like they normally do at the end of the year uh, anyway. But I do have a feeling that E3 2020 will be when Sony will be back. Uh, they'll have their own setup like they always do, and then they're just going to blow everybody away, okay? And then also, guys, you know, keep in mind, too, that Sony has nothing to show at E3, okay? Um, the only thing that they probably could show, even if they did attend E3 2019, is what, the rest of Death Stranding, um, maybe some updated footage on Ghost of Tsushima, and some updated footage on The Last of Us. Other than, other than that, they just don't have anything else to show, okay? So, you always got to keep that in mind as well, okay? Um, other, I mean, it's, there's no other accessories out, you know, the PlayStation VR is already out. They possibly could show the 3D rudder, you know, in real time, but other than that, it's not enough information and enough content in my personal opinion to warrant them for an entire show okay so that's the reason why i believe or the reasons why uh sony's actually not going to be attending e3 of 2019 um and lastly guys how do you feel about google stadia i actually never did a separate video on that but i did read on a little bit of the information uh, i'm not really interested in that myself you know the cloud-based gaming i understand it and i do know that that is the future of gaming, you know, unfortunately, you know, because I'm just one of those old school gamers, I like to have the physical console like I've had for the past 30 plus years of my life. I've always had the physical console there, uh, being able to look at it, being able to touch it, being able to, you know, swap out hard drives and, you know, be able to customize it and, and do different things to it. So, um, with Google Stadia, they're trying to get rid of all of that and now, we're talking about uh, possibly international servers, okay, all around the world. And, you know, what do we know about servers, guys? They're tied to computers, servers, the internet, and it has a tendency to crash. It has a tendency to, you know, get hacked and be into the wrong hands, okay? So think about that. If all the information is in the cloud and then those services get hacked or something terrible happens with it, um, what happens to all of your data? Okay, or again, it could be a data breach, and then all your data is out there in the black market and on the dark web for everybody that's a hacker to get their hands on, and then they're going to do damage to, you know, your personal information, okay, and your identity, okay. So, you know, these are some of the things that I think about when it, when it comes to, um, you know, this cloud-based gaming, okay. And that's not to say that that same thing can't happen with Microsoft and Sony, but you know it is what it is so like I said you guys let me know um, how you feel about that information uh, obviously the PlayStation 5 hasn't been officially announced um, again that price point I don't know it could be $500 uh, but again you know it's a premium price and you know like a co-worker always says to me you gotta pay to play <laughs> you know and that's what it is all right so again, you guys let me know, you know, down below in the comment section how you guys feel and also will you be getting the PlayStation 5 on day one or are you guys going to actually wait and keep your PlayStation 4s? Me personally, I'll probably be uh, one of the first people in line with my PlayStation 4 tucked in my armpit and I'll be ready for the next gen as soon as it's ready for everybody else, alright? Also guys, make sure that you like and share this content, I would definitely appreciate that. Also, if you enjoy the content, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. And lastly, do not forget to tap the bell symbol so that you get notifications when the DC show puts up new content. So I appreciate you guys watching and listening and tuning in. Until the next time, have a good one.